Today, we'll be reviewing the LH820ST projector from BenQ. BenQ has really stepped up their game in the projector market to give gamers and golfers what they're looking for in a projector, and the LH820ST does not disappoint. The projector comes equipped with a laser light source, low leg latency for gaming, and a short throw distance for those looking to position their projector in a more unconventional space. We'll look at the specs and perform some real-world testing to help determine if the LH820ST is the right projector for you. Here's a list of the specs for the LH820ST. The LH820ST comes equipped with horizontal and vertical keystone correction as well as corner fit giving you ample flexibility for fine-tuning your image to your screen, especially for golf simulator setups where you want your projector off-center from the screen. It also comes with white balance adjustment, a feature that seamlessly blends edges when projecting with more than one projector. The short throw of this projector is impressive as well, with the ability to fill 100 inches at just 3.5 feet from the screen. The laser light source of the LH820 gives it a crisp, bright image, as well as superb color accuracy. BenQ has even created a golf picture profile within the projector settings to boost color performance for using the projector with a golf simulator. We'll show more of this profile later in the testing, uh, but this feature gives a nice subtle boost to some of the colors, especially the greens, giving a rich, realistic color when golfing on your sim. The biggest drawback would be that the projector is still 1920 by 1080 and not 4K. This isn't a huge deal and it helps cut back on the cost for the LH820ST being a laser projector, but you won't get the sharpness and pixel data that you'll get with a 4K projector. The LH820 has a 10 watt mono speaker capable of a loudness output of 33 decibels. It has a decent sound quality for our projector, but ultimately we would always recommend having an external audio source altogether for great audio quality. Next, we performed a brightness test where we used a light meter to measure the amount of light that hits the screen from the projector. The LH820 gave us a lux reading of 160 at 9.5 feet from the projector to the screen. We also tested the screen brightness using the bright picture profile instead of the default presentation profile. The bright profile gave us a lux reading of 200. So if you need some extra brightness, the LH820ST is able to push out a bit more if needed. So however, in this profile, you may notice your color accuracy suffers a bit with a slight shift towards blue hues. After testing brightness, we tested for dynamic range, color accuracy, and sharpness. So now we're going to do some real world testing for the LH820ST. Uh, we have it set up here right now in uh, the largest standard size pro enclosure that we make. This is the 10 by 15 and a half. And currently the projector is sitting right around 10 feet from lens to screen. So even though it has uh, both horizontal and vertical keystone correction, right now we do have the lens pretty much centered on the screen. We did have to tilt the rear end of the projector up a bit to compensate for the vertical offset of the projector. Um, but otherwise, you can see everything is pretty lined up on the screen. Um, maybe the top right, or pardon me, top left corner might be off a bit, but that's easy enough to fix. Um, you can either use your keystone correction or just go to the corner fit and you can move your screen over until you get everything nice and lined up. So this projector we found does not have zoom on it. Uh, so what that means is you just have to be really precise with your throw distance. Uh, so whether you're mounting it on the ceiling or down on the floor, uh, just make sure you are you know, really getting that distance from lens to screen accurate in order to fill the whole screen with an image. So right now we have everything on the projector set up just to its factory defaults. Um, so we can take a quick look here at the different picture modes that are available. By default, it's set to presentation, uh, but they also have a golf mode on here, which is cool. For our testing, we'll go through and we'll look at the golf mode later on as we're looking at the different softwares just to see what the difference is. Uh, for all the rest of the testing, we'll just keep it with uh, the default presentation mode. Uh, so besides golf, we've got sRGB, the video mode, and then uh, different user customized modes. 
and then bright. Uh, but again, we'll just stick with presentation for now. All right, so first off, let's look at the dynamic range, uh, which is gonna be this area right in here. Uh, you can see it starts off from dark gray going all the way up to the white. Uh, you're looking for a nice clear definition between the different colors, which you can very plainly see. Uh, solid lines between the colors, so that's looking great. Uh, the next one up, uh, just kind of this gradient gray scale right here, uh, where you're kind of looking for the opposite, smooth transitions between the different colors, which again, this really looks like it's doing an excellent job. Don't see any really hard breaks between the colors. It's pretty smooth transition the entire, entire way across. And looking at just the kind of the blacks on the screen, uh, you can see over here where some of those black squares meet the edge of the enclosure, which I mean, we know we've got a really dark black enclosure. And you can see it's hard to differentiate between the square on the screen and the edge of the enclosure. So you've got some nice deep blacks there. So if we're gonna criticize anything in that grayscale gradient, I think it might be somewhere right in here. Uh, where it's maybe less of a smooth transition uh, between the grays, but it's still pretty tough to see to the naked eye, and overall, it's, it's looking really good. Uh, so the sharpness, I mean, you can definitely see, uh, like up here, it, it looks like, um, I mean, you can tell there's supposed to be lines there. When you really get up next to the screen, uh, you can tell it's, it's pretty muddy, uh, where it looks like the lines maybe blend together more. Um, and then right here where it's supposed to be cross hatched again, you can, you can tell what it's trying to do, but, um, you know, with the 1080p image and those really fine lines, it's just really not pulling it off as successfully as maybe a 4k projector. So just looking at the overall sharpness of the image, um, it's actually pretty impressive. Some of the other projectors we've tested, um, it seems like we've focused more on the middle. Um, where we've got a nice clear image in the middle of the screen, but then out towards the edges, it starts to get a little bit fuzzy. This one, it seems like, you know, we are seeing a clearer image all across the screen. That might have to do with the fact that it isn't really being keystone corrected at all. Um, you know, so we, we've got it lined up just perfectly on the screen, but you know, except for maybe a little bit at the bottom, um, overall, it's, it's a very clear image and nice and focused across the, the whole height and width of the screen. So one other area we noted was right in this kind of spot right here, where it seems like it's having a hard time distinguishing between individual lines uh, for some reason. Uh, it does start to get a little blurry over to the right, but just for some reason, this spot right here, they're all kind of blending together into a, just a, a darker area. So one other thing we noticed is something called chromatic aberration, uh, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Uh, we had to get really up close to the screen to notice it, um, but it's, it's faint, but it's there. Uh, if you look between where the black square and the white lines transition, at the bottom of the square, you can see it's very faintly green. And then at the top of a square, you'll see it's very, very faintly magenta. Um, you know, it's something that is usually caused by the, the glass of the lens on the projector, which uh, sometimes with some lower price projectors, you might see it. Um, you know, again, on this one, it's very faint. So just looking at the colors um, over to the side here, uh, the green and the blue, they look fantastic. A lot of, I mean, it's bright, they really pop. Uh, the red might be a little bit more muted uh, doesn't quite pop as much. And then we notice over here on this yellow, it might be a little bit cooler than we would like to see, maybe a hint of blue to it almost. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the colors, again, they look fantastic. Um, you can see on the uh, gradient, the color gradient here, um, there's maybe a hard transition between like orange and yellow, maybe a little bit from yellow to green. Uh, but otherwise it's really smooth transitions all the way across so you know, you'll, you'll get a fantastic image a lot of color clarity so here's the projected image compared to what the image looks like on a computer monitor
Next, we ran through a few different courses on GS Pro to show you what gameplay looks like on the LH-H20ST. We also recorded the courses using the built-in Golf Picture Profile to show a color comparison between the two settings. The Golf Profile seems to give a nice boost to the vibrance in the greens that, in our opinion, gives a really eye-pleasing look and we'll probably end up using that most often in our sim bay. Here's an example video to show the picture quality for those planning on using their setup to watch movies or videos. Here's an example of how this projector looks with some ambient light if you don't have a light controlled space. We're sitting at about six or so lux for ambient brightness hitting the screen, so this is what the screen will look like in a non light controlled area with this projector.
So our final thoughts on this projector. Uh, first off, the fact that it's a laser projector for $1,900 is great. You get a sharp, bright image with BenQ's gorgeous color and dynamic range, and the short throw distance is perfect for mounting the projector up close to the screen and helps you avoid unwanted shadows on your image. This is a projector designed with golf simulation experiences in mind. The only real drawback we found is that this projector isn't 4K. It's not a huge deal if you're gonna be 10 to 15 feet away from the screen, but it still lacks the clarity that a 4K projector can offer. So even if you have a 4K projector, if your computer isn't putting out a 4K signal, you'll still end up with a 1080p image. You'll be paying twice as much for a 4K laser projector, so you'll have to decide if you'll be running a 4K setup from your computer and how important those extra pixels are to you. We hope this video helps with your projector purchase. Uh, let us know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see any other projectors compared in the comments below. If you appreciate content like this, please take the time to like this video as it really informs us of what kind of videos you find helpful and improves our performance in YouTube's algorithms. And as always, please like and subscribe for more content on building your own golf simulator setup.